let's talk about the tracker. Uh, this is, <laughs> that's awesome, Draka. This is uh, Tess Graymane, and we will just keep this starting here. It doesn't really matter. So this is the first encounter. Um, this time we got gobbles, and I'm not so much worried about who we're facing here. I thought we would use this video just to talk about the, uh, the, battlefield for the synergies that we're looking for the when we're playing with the hero power you. scavenge and with this hunter in general. Uh, I think the most obvious one, I, I mean, I'm thinking it's obvious. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that it's like a lot of people think about this, but um, if you go with sort of a jade strategy, uh, anything that grows, the more you play it, um, because you're able to discover a class spell that has been played, and that is both things that you play and what your opponent plays, so always kind of keep that in mind as well. But if you think about that, that gives you access to infinite jades, right? So as you're choosing cards, keep that in mind that one of the easy sort of strategies that if you get a decent deck and get the right passives, that you'll have no problem clearing with this hunter is sort of going with the infinite jade strategy. <laughs> And with only 10 health, we're just going to go face here. Uh, so it's sort of a thief, kind of a thief um, jade combination is what I've used uh, most often. First kill. We are going to, I think we're going to take this down. First kill. And we'll definitely look at that and briefly talk through some of the other things that... Uh, are usable once we get to the end of this first encounter, which will only take a moment here. One of my viewers just very generously donated to the stream. And again, Draka, I really appreciate that. As now your uh, donation and your generosity lives in infamy via YouTube. All right, let's go ahead and finish this poor poor thing off and uh, we can talk about the passives that we see with uh, our first choice here <laughs> yeah, you are immortal okay so maybe the most important moment in these in, in these uh, monster hunts is your first treasure choice right um, and there are a lot of different synergies at play with all of the different hunters. I told you about the sort of thieving um, infinite jade loop that you can use with, with this hunter. And that's, it's, it's always tempting to go that way. But any of them, I think you can turn into a successful deck. They may not all be as broken or, or um, as easy as, as the others, but uh, I think they can all be good. So I'm always drawn to the ones that impact the hero ability, especially on one that I really like where in this case, I really like this hero ability. So I think that taking this passive where you can use it twice, or even if you just use it once, it only costs you one mana. Like that's so important, uh, in particular, if you're going with something like a Jade strategy, because um, you're, you're obviously you have more mana left over even after you just use it once. Or if you get into late game and mana is not really an issue, the fact that you can do it twice if, you, if, if several spells have been cast, you may not get it one time. So to be able to do it a second time to have a better chance of getting it. Um, Glyph of Warding, both in the dungeon runs from Kobolds and Catacombs, the last uh, expansion, and this one, I think it's okay. It's one of those that it's, it's hard to evaluate, um, but I do think it's okay. It's just not as fun, so I don't tend to pick it as often. Entrenchment can be good. In the final encounter, which if you are needing help on the final final encounter, I hope you'll look at the video I released on how to defeat Hagatha, the last encounter. But um, in the final one, I don't think entrenchment's that helpful. Uh, everything just everything that's going on in that encounter is so over the top and broken that uh, this one doesn't help that much. But in, in a regular run, your minions just being able to trade that successfully, I think that can at least help get you pretty deep. It may not be quite enough to push you over the edge unless, without a pretty good deck built around it, but it's pretty good. We're going to take Cult of the Wolf here, though, and um, let's look at our first so choice of cards. Safely venture farther into the Witchwood. All right, so let's look at these. Um, resourceful looks okay. Um, 
you get a secret here that'll bring a minion back. Shadow Step does the same thing. So you're really looking at, again, things that will create Jade or other things that will uh, be beneficial to play with a battle cry and then bringing it back. And then Healbot, that can be good. Um, we'll skip the Jade here for a second. King's Bait, and this is definitely another um, another route you can go is, is looking specifically for ways to make Kingsbane really advantageous for you. Um, we're going to take Jade though. Uh, we'll hope, hopefully get better Jade in the future. What you really want is the spell because obviously using our ability we're going to be able to bring that back. But we'll take this for now hoping that we'll be able to build around it later. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful. This is again really not about that first encounter with the Gobbler, but more about um, things you can be thinking about when you're first trying to um, to use the tracker and how to make Miss Greymane a successful hunter for you. But uh, as always, thanks for watching. As you delve deeper into the wood, the creatures will get more dangerous. All right, so that was Gobbles first.